these scary looking, stretched out fish lie in wait for their prey in cracks and crevices, sporting a set of fangs that would make Red Riding Hood shudder. They have huge heads and are covered in small scales embedded in the skin, giving them a distinctly leather face look. But appearances can be deceiving, as we're about to find out. This is the wolf eel. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Wolf eels inhabit bays and inlets in the temperate North Pacific, from the southeastern Bering Sea and eastern Aleutian Islands to southern California. Although they are called wolf eels, that's actually a total misnomer, as wolf eels are not actually true eels. True eels are anguilliforms, which is an order of fish encompassing over 800 long-bodied species. The wolf eel, aka Anorictus ocellatus, despite its appearance, belongs to the order Persiforms, which means it's more closely related to grunt sculpins than to true eels. The wolf eel is monotypic, meaning that it's the only species in its genus, Anorictus. The other genus in the Anoricatidae family, Anoricus, has four species, the northern, bearing, spotted, and Atlantic wolffish. But they're not nearly as long and fun as the wolf eel. Each of these species has its own special adaptation. The Atlantic wolffish, for example, has absolutely no chill. High levels of antifreeze protein in its blood prevent it from getting too cold in the Arctic waters. Wolf eels are the longest and largest of these bunch of cousins. They can grow up to two and a half meters, or almost eight feet. That's almost twice as tall as me. And I'm not very tall. Wolf eels swim like a snake slithers on land by propelling themselves forward with S-shaped movements. As juveniles, they really stand out in shades of bright orange. As they age, they dull down to more subdued tones of brown and gray, covered in a pattern of dark spots as unique to the individual as a fingerprint. What big teeth you have may have been directed at the wolf in her grandmother's clothing, but Little Red Riding Hood may as well have been talking about the big bad wolf eel. Their teeth are really freaky. The wolf eel's most striking feature are definitely its massive chompers. The wolf eel, sometimes also called the sea wolf, has two kinds of teeth, long and pointed canine-like teeth in the front and heavy molar-like teeth in the back. So although the eel part isn't truly accurate, the glinting mouth knives definitely justify the wolf in their name. Their voracious appetites, constantly forcing them to wolf down more prey, really adds a whole other meaning to the wolf brand. Wolf eels use their massive jaws of steel to crunch through the hard shells of invertebrates, like clams, sand dollars, crustaceans, and even spiny, spiny sea urchins. To these echinoderms, these fish truly are the big bad wolf. If you've ever known the pain of stepping on a sea urchin, just imagine swallowing one. Ugh. They may look vicious, but wolf eels are actually quite mild-tempered with the humans they encounter. There are even cases of them coming out of their dens to interact with divers in the wild. These fish certainly have a tender side, especially when it comes to finding true love. They spend most of their youth on the open ocean until they meet their forever mate. Then, they'll find a cozy den together where they'll both remain for the rest of their lives. Together, these two soulmates will tenderly care for their 10,000 eggs. Once the eggs are fertilized, she will form them into a ball using her body, and then she and her mate will wrap themselves around them to protect. For the four-month incubation period, only one partner will ever leave to feed at a time, ensuring one stays behind to protect the clutch. During this time, the mother will constantly shift the eggs to keep them oxygenated. 
When it's time to hatch, the mother gently squeezes the egg ball, helping her little ones emerge. The lifespan of a wolf eel in the wild isn't entirely understood. In captivity, some live to be over 20 years old. Since the females only reach sexual maturity at around age 7 in the wild, it's thought that these fish do indeed live very long lives. So why say, long live the wolf eel? What should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya!